Greetings and welcome to Logic. In this video, I'm going to be discussing if an ancient advanced civilization could have existed thousands of years ago. I see many videos of people claiming that some advanced technology was needed to build some of ancient history's grand monuments, or even that some monuments had a more advanced purpose like obelisks transmitting electricity, for example. But no actual evidence has ever been found to support any of these theories, so by the end of the video, I hope the logic that I provide can show why there was most likely never any ancient advanced civilizations on Earth in the millions of years of fossil and archaeological evidence that we have. I hope you enjoy the video. Before comparing structures throughout time, I would like you to take some things into account which should be considered. The first being that we only exited the Old Stone Age, or the Paleolithic era, around 12,000 years ago after the Younger Dryas event, which signalled the end of the last glacial period, which is why many know it as the end of the last Ice Age. But from before then, we only found basic chipped stone, wood and bone tools from us being hunter-gatherers. It wasn't until around 5,000 years ago, or around 3,300 BC, when we really exited the Neolithic era, or the New Stone Age, and entered what we know as the Bronze Age. So the only tools were mainly stone, wood and bone all the way up until then. Now, another extremely important thing to take into account is human population. We obviously don't have exact figures, but it's estimated that there were only around 4 million people on the planet around 10,000 years ago. Then by around 2,000 years ago, there was estimated to be around 190 million. So it took around 8,000 years for the population to grow from 4 million to 190 million, which is nearly a 50x or 50 times multiplier. And today the population is around 8.5 billion. So it's taken the last 2,000 years to grow another nearly 50x or 50 times multiplier. So around 10,000 years ago, there was only about 0.05% of today's population. And so to put that into context, Rome in Italy today is rated as the 109th largest city in the world and has a population of around 4.3 million people. Whereas around 10,000 years ago, the entire world population was about what Rome is today. Tokyo in Japan is the largest city on Earth today at around 37 million people. So Tokyo alone has nearly 10 times the amount of people today than was on the entire Earth 10,000 years ago. So with that out the way, let's start with a brief look at some megalithic sites and cultures that we know of which are aimed at by people when trying to show proof of advanced civilizations and construction tools. First we have the likes of Gobekli Tepe and Karahan Tepe, which are commonly the most famous sites in Turkey dated to around 9600 BC or around 11,600 years ago, which coincidentally is right after the Younger Dryas event, and are some of the oldest ancient settled sites discovered, which include megalithic stones carved and erected, most notably the famous T-pillars. Some of the heaviest T-pillars weigh in at around 14 tonnes, but excavation of the pillars wasn't always successful, as shown by this unfinished pillar still in the ground, most likely left there due to a mistake or crack in the rock, Taking a look around the rest of the site shows basic constructions of walls and enclosures using small rocks of all different shapes and sizes. So the rest of the sites clearly look human made. Many stone tools have been discovered around these sites, and between carving and grinding stones, nothing more sophisticated than that has been found. These sites even predate pottery as no pottery was found. Even looking at the most impressive pillars, with a little inspection you can see they're far from what we would call perfect or uniform in any way, which to me points more towards evidence of skilled stone workers of the time in charge of the carving and community manpower for moving the stones, most likely aided by wooden levers or rollers and rope to make easier to move. Another thing to note is that these megalithic structures were only found around these communal or ceremonial sites, however they were used so there would have more likely been a strong community effort for whatever vision or purpose these sites had, making manpower easier to come by for moving the large stones. It was also around this time where early signs of farming and agriculture started emerging. Fast forward five and a half thousand years later, the Sumerians appeared on the scene in Mesopotamia around 4000 BC, and the Sumerians have been credited with inventing many things which are still used today in more advanced forms, like writing, the wheel, government, schools, and many more practices. 
They're also attributed with building ziggurats, huge structures which would include a temple and other buildings, and hold a strong resemblance to many temples and pyramid structures constructed thousands of years later. The ziggurat of Ur is the most intact and partly reconstructed, but shows far more advancement in construction from the thousands of years prior, and a move towards what we would think of as more uniform building standard. By this time, we were also far more competent at farming and agriculture, and just like computers and the digital age have freed our minds of small repetitive tasks allowing us to achieve more, I believe that farming and agriculture had a similar effect thousands of years ago. As before farming and agriculture were established, time would have been mostly spent foraging and hunting to survive. The population by this time would have likely been somewhere around 28 million people worldwide, which is around the same as the population of Shanghai in China today. The ancient Egyptian dynasties started around a thousand years after the Sumerians, and as we know the Egyptians are credited with building the pyramids, and the pyramids of Giza are probably the most referenced ancient structures that people point towards as evidence of ancient advanced technology, especially the Great Pyramid. However, take into consideration that we had been working stone for thousands of years by that point, the population multiplying, societies and communities growing, more manpower, more minds for problem solving, more chance for skilled stone workers and engineers to practice their craft, and the only tools we find are what we would expect for that time period. We also have a pretty good idea that the causeways leading to the pyramids of Giza led from the water to allow stones to be floated close to the pyramids, probably using floats made of wood or inflated animal skins. Ancient Egypt overlapped with the Greek and Roman periods. Structures from the Roman Empire, for example, also include some massive multi-ton stones. And as that is the strongest material humans had been working with in constructing buildings for at least 10,000 years, it was most likely seen as worth the effort, as buildings made of stones are the ones that ancient people would have still had or used many generations after construction unlike wood structures, which would have mostly been lost with time or even the weather. Plus, using as large a stones as they could manage would make it harder to deconstruct, steal or damage over time, making it far more important to use large stones to construct important buildings they would want to stand for hundreds or thousands of years. Carvings and decorations in stone became far more intricate and detailed with more pristine finishes over time between the Egyptians, Greeks and Romans. We transitioned over to what we call the Iron Age at around 800 BC, and then it was a little over a thousand years after we started really working iron that some of the oldest cathedrals we know of started being constructed. Also in ancient India, it's still clear to see the amazing detail and character of many Hindu temples from around that time, a few hundred years AC. Now, over the last 1,000 years or so, the human population has been continuing to multiply even greater than ever before, as well as huge advancements in technology and education slowly stacking up, from the invention of things like gears to steam power to the telescope, the microscope, electric generation, with each new advancement came more ways of converting energy and viewing reality, leading to new ideas and inventions used for potential technological and scientific advances, and here we are today, with computers in our hands, able to communicate across the world almost instantly with anyone, and the largest and most advanced constructions ever conceived by our species, as well as the population multiplying by over 2,000 times in the last 10,000 years we've been advancing. Even though outlining the different cultures over the last 10,000 years shows how we have advanced gradually, where sometimes there was thousands of years before a new advancement, the most important point still against advanced ancient civilizations is the complete lack of any evidence. Any claim that ancients using power tools or heavy machinery or advanced metal tools of any kind needs to be backed up by evidence. And the structural stones are only evidence that we no longer know the exact method that they used to achieve these results. And the fact that there was no standardization or mass production techniques shows everything was manual and needed manpower and workman skill and we found their tools, so why would we find basic copper tools and not more advanced tools made of even harder metals, etc? The simple answer is that they never existed. Even burials in tombs locked away for thousands of years, which we still find with treasures and belongings intact, we find no advanced tools and treasures past what we could expect at the time of that culture. 
we also have so many archaeological finds from so many different areas of research that date back hundreds of thousands to millions of years, and we've never found anything to suggest a more advanced species between then and now. Not anything alien or terrestrial. There's also something called the historian's fallacy, which is when someone judges the past based on our knowledge of today, which is a natural cognitive bias, mainly due to modern education and standardization of practices, which we are always learning and trying to make practices more efficient still today, let alone hundreds or thousands of years ago when the population and knowledge was a tiny fraction of what it is today. Through a modern lens, it's incredible what the ancient cultures managed to accomplish. So instead of some people trying to attribute some of these ancient constructions and artifacts to an apparently more advanced civilization, we should really marvel and appreciate the skill, knowledge and determination these ancient cultures had, and not just use imagination to come to conclusions. So what do you think? Are there any points I may have missed that you'd like to highlight, or do you believe that you have any evidence to the contrary? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Well, that's it for this video. I should be back for good, and I'm intending on making regular videos again for this channel, so please like and subscribe, thanks for watching, and take care of yourselves out there. Goodbye for now.